Thank you for listening to the Golden Hour Drip podcast with me, Logan Lee Miller. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to the Golden Hour Drip podcast. I am your host, Logan Lee Miller. And did you know that humans are the only animals that deprive themselves of sleep? Fun fact. I mean, I think I saw on TikTok, I'd like to say that I read it in a like a medical journal, but I definitely did not. Um, The reason I bring this up is because I am running on some low hours of sleep right now. This past weekend was my best friend's wedding. Andrew and I have known each other since junior high band. It is crazy to think about all the milestones that we've achieved together and um, just like reminiscing reminiscing about everything that has transpired since you know junior high or even like before that elementary but we had a freaking blast i stayed up super super late on saturday and you know i'm feeling it today i'm feeling it today but sometimes when you have these like big events and all the fun things like you you have to you know deprive yourself of a little sleep you have to rally and i definitely definitely rallied this weekend it was so funny um honestly they had a perfect wedding there's nothing that could have gone better it was beautiful the dance floor was alive and well everyone was on it my feet have so many blisters it's unreal like I have this massive one on the side of my like big toe. My shoes were brand spanking new. And as a matron of honor, like I should have known better, you know, I should have, I should have worn them. I should have stretched them, but I did not. Um, and so I literally have a blister that sticks out about like an inch and a half. Um, but they're going to be the same shoes I wear for Adriana's wedding. So it'll be fine. Hopefully they'll be all broken in by now, but it's literally, it was a blast. So, um, last, this past week I was in Iowa. I got to my small little hometown in Iowa where I, you know, went to high school. Um, I got there on Wednesday and I kind of hung out for the week. And then me and my mom drove up um, to Des Moines on, let's see, Friday for the rehearsal dinner. And I don't know, I just, I feel like with the days being so long and it not getting dark until like 9 p.m. (laughs) I know it's like 8.30, but I, I don't know. Like, it seems like the days are so long and we can fit so much in, but they're also like short at the same time. But I will say I've lived a healthy, busy summer and the official start of summer is not until like this week. So I have just like a great feeling for this year. Um, we're, we're about halfway through it and it has just been one amazing good thing after another. So I shouldn't be complaining about low sleep, but I, I, but I am like, I'm just, I, since the days are so long, it doesn't feel right to be going to bed when it is super, super bright out. Or maybe I just need to like hop on Amazon and get some blackout curtains, or maybe I will fish out my little face mask because I had been using a face mask earlier this spring to help block out the sunlight. Um, Maybe I will have to start doing that again because I have got to get to bed earlier. I have been staying up until 10.30, 11 o'clock. You guys know me, I am a nine o'clock, 9.30 kind of girly, and it has just been brutal. Like, I wanna be outside, I wanna be in the garden. I, guys, I have so many flowers coming up right now. Like, I've planted them from seeds, and I, my zinnias are blooming. Since I've been gone for like multiple days, they hit like a good growth spurt. And so a few of them have started to bloom, which reminds me when I got home, it was so sweet. So my dad was watching Rooster and Rowdy while we went to Des Moines. Usually I like bring the dogs when I go to my mom's house and I like didn't bring them this time because we were going to be at an 
a hotel like I was gonna be a part of the wedding like I cannot take my dogs to a hotel like one my dogs aren't like super super socialized the two the, the hotel doesn't allow pets so I had to find a babysitter, which is very nice and very kind that my dad would come and let them out. But when I got home, there was a bouquet of wildflowers on my island. Um, I guess one of the neighbor girls was selling wildflower bouquets, um, had like a little table set up near one of the gas stations we live by, and he bought a bouquet. And so it is so beautiful it was such a nice surprise it was like the perfect um aesthetic for me i will say there's a difference between like a man's bouquet and then a bouquet a woman would pick out for herself if you go to like walmart a lot of those bouquets are like man aesthetic bouquets and i i really think that they're like your typical Gerbera daisies and they've been dyed a different color and the arrangements are just like not they're just they're basic I don't know like I do not know how to describe it more than a like a man's what is it called like I'm dressing for um a man's gaze okay so like the male gaze flowers are at walmart and they're like the bouquets that are like kind of funky I, that's like the perfect name for the bouquets at walmart like they're funky don't get me wrong i love myself a walmart bouquet but like they are not whimsical they're not fun they're not like dinner party appropriate you know and these wildflower bouquet it was like perfect it had like these small little white um flowers they kind of look like crazy daisies but they're like wild i don't know it was just like a very aesthetically pleasing bouquet of flowers and i was like oh, how cute like i couldn't have done a better job myself and i was like oh it's because it was local little girls who have the female gaze who are you know like making it aesthetic and pleasing because that is what they would want right um it's just i don't know like people who are going to walmart to pick up flowers appreciate you thank you for picking up flowers at walmart they usually last a long time for me um you know we we love the flowers wherever but i mean there's fields all around and you can go pick a bouquet like i don't know it was like the perfect very very cute um and also not overstuffed sometimes i feel like they can get a little overstuffed um and this is if you're on youtube watching i'll show you a little picture of it um it was just like very whimsical and super super cute i i was in love and it was such like a cute surprise garrett and i got home and there's this little bouquet on the countertop. So I definitely appreciated that. And also the fact that dad watched the dogs because I, I was a little nervous, honestly. And it felt super weird going, like traveling to Iowa and not having Rooster and Rowdy with me. I was like, oh, like for the last couple trips, like they've came with me. And I think they're doing better on their socialization skills because um, like, usually my parents, um, my mom and stepdad, um, will have like a, like guest over or something. We'll be at the pond. We'll be having a fire. We'll be hanging out, playing games, whatever. And usually like the dogs are meeting new people. They're in a new environment. They have cats running around, <laughs> like all the things. So that has been, um, really fun to watch them kind of step out of their comfort zone and do new things and meet new people um and this time it was super super weird but it it was a big weekend like i could not have any distractions i will say we drove down on friday um and it was me and my mom we hopped in the car we, i had a, like a half day at work and drove to Des Moines for the rehearsal dinner. Or here's the thing, I keep saying rehearsal dinner and I think it's because in my mind, 
when you are delegating the duties, the rehearsal dinner is usually like your mother-in-law. And so I didn't really have to think about the rehearsal dinner or the rehearsal really because our rehearsal was so quick like it was just on our farm like we had a wide open field we had chairs set up there really wasn't much like to do for the actual wedding ceremony we did build a like little wooden frame that my cousins actually used last weekend for their wedding they had just painted it white which was super cute and the fact that it's been two and a half years since Garrett and I have gotten married it'll be three years in October and they were able to use like the same frame like that's kind of fun um but like there was really no setup so our rehearsal dinner was like I did it again. The rehearsal was super, super like basic. And what I remember and what my favorite part was, was the rehearsal dinner and the after party. Like that was just, it was a blast to me. I had so much fun, um, like hanging out. The pressure was off because tomorrow I would have to worry about everything. Everything had been planned, invites had gone out, people had RSVP'd, we're getting married tomorrow, there's nothing more to do until we get to tomorrow. So the rehearsal dinner was my one of my favorite parts of my wedding weekend. And so I keep referring to it as the rehearsal dinner when we had a rehearsal, we had a rehearsal dinner, and then we had an after party, right? So um, the rehearsal was stunning. I got to see the venue for the very first time. Massive, massive sanctuary. And it was just like this beautiful stage. And I honestly was blown away by how perfect and traditional it was going to be. My um, dad had a very traditional wed wedding to um, Brody's mom. It was very traditional and I honestly like didn't want mine to be as traditional but after seeing Andrew and Rachel some parts of me wishes that I would have done something more traditional and then another part of me is like absolutely not like I I wish I didn't even do the traditional that I did. I wish we would have just eloped, right? We have had so many weddings. Um, I, I've just had wedding on the brain. It's been really honestly, like I love seeing what other people do for their weddings and how they express their connection to one another. So it's always super, super fun to see the venue where they picked and what how it's gonna lay out and what it's gonna look like. And I was Andrew's matron of honor. So I like, actually how they did it was really, really nice. They had, um, so we had girls on one side, boys on the other is traditional. And then I was on the boy side to be Garrett's or Garrett's <laughs> to be Andrew's matron of honor. And then, um, Rachel, his fiance and now wife was actually, um, she had a male on her side. Um, but instead of me walking with him, the, you know, boy that was going to be on Rachel's side, I actually walked with my, um, like the second person on Andrew's side. So me and it'd be like, uh, matron of honor on Andrew's side and then groomsman number two if I'm groomsman number one technically we walked down together and then we were able to just like file on the same side that was so nice I wish I would have thought of that for my wedding um, but instead because Lily and Andrew could have walked in together and then we wouldn't have had like the mishap of like oh you would which um you know, where are they going to stand and what, if it's going to match up, like uh, all that stuff. So that was really nice. Um, I was a bit nervous for the wedding ceremony because I had to not only hand off the rings, like I held the rings, I then had to sign their marriage certificate and we did it during the ceremony. Um, and I've already mentioned my shoes and how crazy they were with my blister. Um, luckily they weren't hurting too much like in the beginning of the ceremony, but I mean, we were standing up there for probably, I don't know, like 20 minutes and I definitely feel it today. Um, it's Sunday when I'm recording this. My knees hurt. I don't know if it was getting it down on the dance floor or those shoes or what. 
but I might have to get some like inserts or something for Adriana's wedding or go back to the drawing board and get something else. But here's the thing, they're like perfect. They're for both weddings. Like they fit both aesthetics. And so I'm really mad if I'm gonna have to buy another pair of shoes. Um, especially because I just bought like these really really cute flats and Rowdy chewed them up while I was gone. Like I left um, the house, we like went and had supper and I came back and my um, shoe was chewed. So I'm really sad that I have to buy a double of that shoe. I don't want to have to buy a double of a bridesmaid shoe. So um, but we were standing for like quite some time and then I had to like walk over to the table where we signed the marriage certificate. So it was a lot of pressure. I didn't want to mess up, especially because it's not my day. Like the attention should not be on me falling down the stairs, right? And embarrassing myself. But um, the rehearsal went fine. Like I was all good. Of course I was in um, like a, sh a regular dress, not like a uh, formal dress, you know, that goes all the way down to the floor. I had like this cute little um short no actually i was wearing the same pantsuit that i wore to photograph ashley and william's wedding so here i am like running around like completely comfortable in my outfit um and then we ended up going to a dive bar it was called um oh my gosh it was like the dirt not the dirty fish bowl that's why i wanted to keep um bait shop or or something of that caliber and I had my first non-alcoholic beer there it was so good um, it tasted like hoppy and perfect um, they they brought mine was the only one this is so like I wasn't making it like super super known that I wasn't drinking alcohol I was just like not making a big deal of it it was 10 p.m. by this time I have in the past like I have really had um like what's it called Ang it's not hang anxiety where after you like have a night of drinking you like worry about what you said or how you acted even if it was like completely normal um like behavior and if you were sober like you wouldn't have even thought one second about it so I hate feeling that way like I hate thinking oh my gosh like that is so cringe and honestly like we shouldn't even be thinking that about ourselves but I wanted to have a clear mind I wanted to be fully present I did not want to be sloppy I didn't of course want to embarrass Rachel or Andrew so I was like you know what it's been a long day because I had worked on Friday for a half day drove to Des Moines which was a two and a half hour drive um, after already being deprived, I've been just deprived since April. Okay. Like I need, I really need a rest day. I think I'm going to schedule a rest day. I need to take a day off where I just catch up on sleep. I sleep in as late as I want and I like work on the things that have been being put on the back burner. You know what? I'm going to write that down. Take a day off next week. Not not this week, but next week. Take a take a day off. Take a breather. Maybe I will take off Wednesday. I don't know. Maybe I'll call in. <laughs> we'll see. So, but I had my first non-alcoholic beer, and this is called um, it's Untitled Art Italian Style. It was like a pilsner. It was so good. Like. Mine was the only one that came in a can um, with a like cup. Everybody else had gotten drafts and um, or ciders that were drafts, I guess. And I was the only one who had got a can, which nobody really noticed. But I was like, oh gosh, like how embarrassing. But I was so glad that she actually brought me the can afterwards because I was like, I need to pick some of these up because it tasted so good like I got all of the amazing flavors from the beer and I did not feel like an ounce of any alcohol like that's that's what non-alcoholic beverages are for like to not have the alcohol right and so I was like this is literally the best of both worlds I get to have the beverage that I've been craving 
but I don't have to deal with like the actual hangover or being embarrassed that I'm not in control of my actions or my emotions. Because let's be honest, when you drink, like you're a little lax, like, right? Like your ambitions have been lowered. And I just like, it was a decision. I'm not, I, I love to have an alcoholic beverage. Like I love um, champagne. I love wine. I love um, beer. I love June shine, the hard kombucha. Like I love all of these things, but I also like, I don't have to drink to have a good time, right? Like I, and sometimes I have to tell myself that like, you do not have to drink to fit in. You can do something different. You don't have to make a big deal about it. Like, cause I don't like want to draw attention to it. Um, because usually people think that I'm pregnant and they're like, Oh, are you pregnant? And then I'm like, no, like I hate, I don't know. I'm to the age where everybody asks when I'm going to have a baby. I live in the Midwest. I've been married for two and a half years. Like people are certain to, get antsy and I don't even know why because they're not changing the diapers like I will be so like what's a two yet you know <laughs> so I um I don't like to make a big deal about it because people instantly think oh my gosh are you pregnant and I just don't like getting into that conversation of like kids you know because I think it's it's very um uh, private for each individual and each couple and everything so I'm just like I don't want to get into it but I was very glad that she brought um, the can so then I could see what it was and the artwork was really really cool um, it was by Noelle Miller and it was like this um, super graphic like um, green and red I don't know it's very cute um, and it like had a head too like for beer when you pour it like the foam head it, it had everything I don't know like I it was truly a game changer for me um it was late I did I, I knew I had a big day the next day was the wedding I wanted to be bright eyed and bushy tailed I wanted to be positive I wanted to have all the energy and really support the couple in the best way possible so I was just yeah I just didn't want to do it and I'm so glad that I made the decision that was um, right for me and I trust in my gut and you know what it was super super good I also I was so glad I had my little purse on me and I have golden hour drift stickers I've been tagging anywhere that I see other stickers I've been like putting my sticker on it too so there is a bunch like just in Kansas City when I was in Austin Texas I like tagged a couple places there when I was in Des Moines during the bachelorette I tagged a few places and then like this weekend at the dive bar it was covered in stickers um, so I like put a few golden hour drip stickers out I don't know it's very fun if you happen to find one of these stickers if you take a photo and tag me in your Instagram story at golden hour drip you'll have something coming in your DMs, okay? You'll, you'll have a little something if you find my, um, oh, what do they call it, an Easter egg <laughs> where you find something like that's not supposed to be there kinda. So, um, but yeah, I was really, really happy that the non-alcoholic beverage was made available because a lot of places don't have non-alcoholic um, options besides like apple juice or milk or, <laughs> water right like i want really great options that don't have a ton of sugary calories but are still like a fancy bev i love beverages i'm addicted to going to starbucks i'm addicted to going to our local coffee shops i'm addicted to going to juice shops all the things like i love to have a little drink in my hand um and i don't like soda i don't like like coke I don't like sprite like I don't like those things so I gotta find other options I gotta find the other things that I like so Saturday was or Friday was a success I got to bed it was so cute me and my mom she had drove um up to Des Moines with me I guess it was down <laughs> if we were going south so she had driven up with me because we didn't know if like Rachel and Andrew needed any help setting up. Oh, I forgot to mention their rehearsal dinner food was, oh my gosh, it slapped. It was like this um, Greek 
um, salad and they had gyro, like make your own gyros. Oh, and they had pasta and garlic knots. And I literally smashed that food so hard. It was so good. Me and my mom even took a like plate of food home. They had, they had plenty. Like Rachel and Andrew were telling us they were going to have to eat it for months. Literally. <laughs> like it was, it was just, it was excellent. Like 12 out of 10, like so good. Um, so like I was nice and full and when I, after we had gone out and went to bed, I just like, I have not slept in bed with my mother for a very long time. There was, um, you know, of course, um, nights in my childhood where I'd like crawl into my mother's bed and find comfort in her presence. And so it was really kind of fun to come home from, you know, going out to the, the bar or whatever after and like to get in bed with my mom. Like it was just, I felt like I was back in middle school or high school even like, um, sharing a bed with my mom. So I was so glad that she, that she came and, um, um, Garrett wasn't able to come down until Saturday morning because he had to work and of course watch our dog so um, but then sa Saturday came around first thing I did I did go and get a coffee because um, I just I need coffee to fuel my body to give me some a little bit of energy a little pep in my step and also it's like a treat for the day like it's gonna be a great day it's gonna be amazing you're gonna be able to do all the things and I decided that I was really gonna be focusing on what needs to be done for me to feel like I've had a good day right and just being able to check one thing off your list on oh like I did this so it made it a good day is so important so if that one good thing is I went and got coffee then it is totally totally worth it to me which also if you haven't heard we are having our first ever live podcast event July 15th it's coming up and it is called our coffee house session so it's a live podcast it is at a local coffee shop if you want to hear more details go ahead and click the link in the show note down below and you will get access to our email list and every single Friday I send out an email and it will include the details for the coffee house sessions so freaking excited for this. I love coffee. It just like all made sense for the podcast and to host a first live event. Um, it is a local coffee shop. So if you are, you know, local to the area, I would love it for you to come to the live podcast event because, well, it's our first ever. So <laughs> I need, I need some feedback. I need all the feedback. Um, but yes, you can click the link in the show notes down below and not miss a beat for any of our updates or events that are coming up. I'm hopeful that this is the first of many. Um, but yeah, with the golden hour drip, like drip coffee, like I'm thinking of, you know, maybe some branded items. So it, it is all in the works. It is all coming, baby. First, I need to you know, catch up on some sleep and work out some details. I'm hoping Wednesday. I, know, I I think actually I might take Wednesday off. That would be really great for my brain and my body to just like kind of catch up because like this upcoming weekend we have another thing going. And I honestly, I, did, I just can't catch a break. Like we have so much, I sound like a broken record, but it's true. Like when you have so much going on it is so important for you to carve out time for yourself to carve out time to do the things that you need to get done um and to make sure that you are practicing self-care that is something that i struggle with practicing self-care before i'm like completely toasted burnt out 
like practicing self-care daily and practicing self-love daily so then it doesn't like get to the point where it's disastrous because you've been taking care of yourself um, and it's more part of a routine you do not have to be completely burnt out to practice any sort of self-care or any sort of self-love or you know just taking a break so it's been hard for me I've been trying to remind myself like it's okay to rest it's okay to take a break because you will maximize the benefits even more if you're able to do this because then when you get back to it you can come back harder than you would have if you wouldn't have taken the break right so after I had gathered my you know myself my Starbucks drink I'd gotten up that morning I'd taken a shower personally I I didn't think that it was a big deal for me to shower on the day of the wedding like my hair is just damaged enough that I like it's the hairstyle is not going to slip out right like I am not going to need that extra like dirtiness from not showering I needed to shower um I had like worn a little slip back up to claw clip okay let's back it up a little bit um it was a claw clip it was not an updo so I like for the rehearsal and so I washed my hair I had um worn like um a little yogi bra and I had my Lululemon biker shorts and then like a slouchy long sleeve on top. Um, after I gathered the Starbucks, I put on the hotel robe and when I tell you, this robe was so comfortable. I think I need a robe for the house because I just felt like so plush, so comfortable and it was giving sweet house or what is it, sweet life. Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Oh my gosh, it's been so long since I've thought of that TV show. But I was like, oh, like walking around in the lobby and pointing to things. No, but it was very, very fun to wear the robe. I definitely think that I need to have like one of those just, it was like a heavy like linen. It felt like the bed sheets, honestly. And I just, I loved every single min minute of wearing the robe. And I truly believe, like I was saying, like self-care does not start when you are just like going crazy. You need it at all times. So I definitely will be incorporating a robe into my routine. And I, I was barefaced. Well, I have I have my skincare on, okay? Like, I was not gonna go completely like raw dog in there. I, I had my my base, I had done my vitamin C drops, I had done my hyaluronic acid, um, I put on my like little oil, and my, my face was perfect um, before like getting my hair and makeup done. Well, actually, let, let's back up. I got my hair done, I did my own makeup, and I actually made a bit of a mistake. So I went to Target like um, after the rehearsal was over and I picked up some Ardell individual lashes. Now the individual part, like, all right, I can apply some individual lashes, no problem. Like that was not the issue. I didn't see that it said last up to two weeks. Everybody is so into these semi-permanent lash extensions and I feel like that's what I picked up because it was extremely, extremely difficult to remove and I'm not even kidding when I say it took two and a half hours for me to remove the eyelashes. That is no joke. I was doing a hot press. I was putting, I, I read somewhere or maybe I was on a video or something that like oil will help remove eyelashes. I literally, the lash adhesive remover was extremely painful to apply. It was like burning my eyelid, not even like my eyeball. And like my eyelid felt red and puffy like it had been chemically burned. And I was like trying to remove it the best I could. I like, I wanted to be as gentle as possible on my natural eyelashes um, because this was just a one-time deal, right? Like I want to keep my natural eyelashes. And so I was like trying to be gentle. I will say 
we lost a few good soldiers in that battle. Um, some main character eyelashes were lost, but it just felt so uncomfortable. It was like a constricting, um, the eyelashes, like once I had like messed with them a little bit, they had started to poke me and the adhesive was really, really tough and painful. I didn't feel like I used an overabundance of adhesive. I didn't stick it to the eyelash, but then they ended up being kind of stuck to the eyelash. Like they, I applied them to be on the base of my eye um, and not to the eyelash, but in, in the application, I guess I had gotten a few of the eyelashes like stuck onto the adhesive, but I didn't think that I had used that much of adhesive and I was sticking it to my actual like lid. I don't know. It was so freaking painful. I will never do that again. I think if I do individuals for Adriana's wedding, I will have to like pick up separate glue and not use the one in the kit because it was just super, super aggressive and the removal process was very painful and honestly like my eyes are so sad right now I can't really like put anything on once they heal up I will start to use like my ordinary um little lash serum that I picked up so hopefully that will help you know like nurture my eyelashes back to life um, but I will say like when they were on, they looked super, super good. I'm hopeful that the photos turn out beautiful. I know they will, but, um, it, it just was like a perfect day. I handed off the rings. Well, I like, it was a great ceremony. I just felt so much love. I cried a lot. Maybe it was the tears. I don't know. Like I cried while I was like putting on my makeup. Maybe that had something to do with the adhesion adhesive like sticking to my eyelashes I don't know but I just felt so much love for the couple on the, their big day but I will say Andrew and I went to junior high and high school together we have known each other for quite some time and we also came from the same place right so we had a lot of community members um, growing up that we grew up with come to the wedding right and there always comes this like uncomfortable like situation where they're like asking you questions right like it's almost as if you're at like a family dinner and everybody wants to know about your life and they're questioning and they're like oh what about this and everybody has an opinion and they're not coming from a place of hate right? Like I feel like everybody means well when they ask these questions and I've even caught myself like a few times thinking, oh, like when you get that question, you hate this question. So why are we asking someone else this question? You know what I'm saying? And I've been trying to be super, super selective of the questions that I ask just to make the other person feel comfortable because there are times where I feel uncomfortable in situations and I'm like, oh crap, like if I don't like those questions, I'm sure other people don't like these questions. And maybe I'm just being sensitive to where I'm at right now in my life. I feel very, not unstable, but just like a little unsteady. <laughs> unstable unsteady they're very very similar i will say but i'm feeling a little insecure that's definitely a good word i'm feeling insecure about my career path i am feeling a little um unsure of myself i'm thinking of the path I want to take, what I need to do. I'm in a bit of a transition period again, and I am wanting to really realign and reimagine how I would like my life to be. And part of that means that I have to let go of the things that no longer serve me. I need to let go of my old identity. I need to let go of the things that were working and are no longer working so that I can allow the things that are supposed to be in my life to come into my life. That does not always happen instantaneously. Sometimes it takes a little bit for it to get to you, right? 
And that might mean that you need to learn a lesson or you need to uh, practice a skill or you need to be ready because when you get this thing that you have been waiting for, you need to be ready or you'll feel so bad that you lost your chance that you weren't you know the person you thought you would be when you accepted that thing so i honestly like i'm in this transition period where i have slowly started to get rid of all the things that don't serve me which puts me in a position of in-betweenness with my actual career projection um and all the people you know that we grew up with our um you know community members or even like a lot of andrew's family i know and uh some of rachel's i'm starting to get to know and then you have all the people that you meet for the very first time and they have like such basic questions they're like oh like how do you know rachel or how do you know andrew which are like so easy to answer and then they hit you with the oh so what do you do for work what like what was your major? Um, where do you live? Like, do you have any kids? Like some of those might seem not as like touchy, but like in the right situation with the demeanor, I know everybody is like, at, like saying these things out of the kindness or because they feel a little nervy in this situation and they're trying to make conversation, trying to find like a connection. Like I get it. I, I truly, I get it. Um, but it's also, it's, it's so uncomfortable and you're trying so hard and you want to be polite, but small talk is so like surface level, but also very invasive, right? Like why should we be answering some of these questions to perfect strangers or to someone who we only see like once a year, twice a year, you know, some family members we don't always see all the time. And then like we have, if you're anything like me. You have like this icky feeling on, oh my gosh, what am I going to say to this person? How can I impress them, right? Like, is my answer going to be worthy to their expectation? Are they going to think less of me because of what I'm about to say? How candid do you get with these people? Do you tell them like all that's going on in your life or do you keep it more being positive? Like, these are questions I ask myself. And so everybody wants to... Um, save face or seem like they have it all going on I, I know for a fact that like myself I will maybe it's the customer service in me maybe it's the attitude that I can do anything but I will not crumble if someone like says something and I will save face I can smooth it over I can work my way out of it I can make it happen and so I, I guess it's called bullshitting is the <laughs> is the actual term like I'm, I'm good at that I know that I'm good at it I know that I can do it but like is it necessary like is it necessary to make things sound better than they are or is it better to like tell it exactly how it is no matter how personal that might get right like how deep do you want to get with strangers and then i ask myself like should they even have the privilege to know this intimate information about myself or my life or my passions or what i like because if you tell any just anybody or dream they can take a massive poo on it right like they can tell you all the reasons why it won't work for you or they tried something similar and you know what like it just wasn't it's not real like you need to go and do something more concrete or more a different path or choose the same path they did because they're successful in it whether that's having seven kids or climbing the corporate ladder or living in town or staying in the same place like there are so many opinions like everybody has something to say everybody wants to lend their ear which i get it i like it sometimes i do it myself like where i overshare my personal experience so that other people you know can find direction for from it right like that's my um older sister i guess like that's just part of being a type a eldest child i guess like i've noticed it in other people you have life experiences you want other people to reach their maximum potential so like you share what you've gone through that's why i have a podcast like i love sharing the things um but i'll catch myself like sh am i just pushing my views or what i want someone to do because that's what i wish i would have done right like 
usually when you have advice it's because you did something wrong and you want someone else to do it better but some things should are, are that person's journey and should be you know held to what they want and they should be able to make mistakes and they should be able to pick and choose um what what they're doing so it's a fine line and i just really try to be more specific with my own actions with my own questions with my own interactions because i know how it can feel and it can feel so uncomfortable and I just I've been feeling a bunch of um I guess misplaced imposter syndrome and I've just been like kind of having some self-doubt on a few things which is irritating um but I can't help but like it'll pop up in my brain I've been really really hard at changing, like trying to change the narrative of the conversation going in on my head or if a negative thought pops up because I am in a very transitional stage that I'm like, oh, like what should I just like go back running towards what I know or what I'm good at? Like I could do that or I could challenge myself. So with just like, I felt like I was going back home and I felt like it was... I don't know. I I feel kind of on this tether and I'm just like floating a little bit, right? So I, I was feeling a little self-conscious about that, but I, whenever I'm feeling this way, I just have to remember that this feeling will not last forever and I probably won't see this person for a long time because the people that truly love you and care about your journey and care about what you're doing they have, they'll support you, right? They'll allow you to make mistakes. They will love you through those mistakes. And I just, I feel like a little unsettled, but settled, I don't, it's a very weird, I'm, I've been having the time of my life. I've been so happy, so grateful, but also like this weird, like unsure what to do next and I know it's just my waiting period I know things are coming but it just felt very I don't know very awkward so if you have any sort of family gathering coming up or you know people that you haven't a lot of folks are home for the summer if you're in school and um if you're home from school and your grandma or whoever is asking you about things like it's okay to not have all the answers or not want to share those special intimate things with this person because they're not in your everyday life. They're not your best friend. They're not your spouse. They're not your, your maybe whoever you were super, super close with. So I was trying to work that out in my brain myself. Um, but something that did make me feel a little bit better is I feel like my heritage is kind of unknown to me. I haven't really paid that much attention to it and really, um, I've been wanting to do more research and who, like where my DNA lies and what, um, generations before me, where they've came from, like, I've been really, really interested in this and Garrett and I talked about doing a test like this past Christmas, but we never did it. Um, and on the ride up to the wedding, my mom and I were talking about um, uh, like where we're from. So we ended up, we had lunch while we were on our drive to Des Moines at Bobby Q's. It's a Hawaiian um, establishment and we had like a poke bowl and like some oh it was just so good it honestly like it was chef's kiss it was so good um it had kimchi on it and like oh i just really enjoyed it but we were talking about there was apple cabbage and my mom had said oh i just love cabbage and i was like i i love cabbage too like it's just so refreshing i love the crunch of it um, I, cabbage is just, it's one of my favorites. I love doing a spring roll with cabbage in it. It, it's, ooh, it's so good. Maybe we'll have that this week, but she stated, she's like, yeah, maybe it's the German in us. That's probably why we like cabbage. And I was like, wait, 
are we German? And she's like, yeah. And so we were talking about like our, and I was a little bummed because I've been kind of hoping that I was Greek, but I know there's no way. Maybe, maybe down, maybe we'll find something, but yeah, it's German. And actually, so my great grandfather on my mother's side, so my grandma's dad, um, was actually, um, Indian. And so he, so then it makes sense on like why Lily, her features are so like not strict striking. Um, and then like my aunt Charlotte, who is my grandma's, um, sister, like it just kind of was making sense. And we went over some family history and, and some events that had happened, um, in her life. And when I was a child and before I was born and with my, like, Nana Joe, which is my mom's mom. That's why I call her not not grandma. It's Nana Joe. And I was just thinking about all these things and I felt although I feel like kinda unstable in my career and in my life project like projection, I felt a little like stable knowing so much family history and like finding out some things or some stories that had happened you know, before I was born and it all made like sense on other things. And I honestly, I was super, super just like, wow, <laughs> I don't know. Like that's, that's the best word that I got. But, and then she was talking about like my dad and, and his, um, cause she knows like some family history about my dad, even though they're obviously separated. And I honestly, like, I think I'll still do a DNA test maybe with Garrett, but um, I'm pretty sure Garrett is super German too, so I'm like, oh, like, I need to find a way to, um, be proud of that, because I swear, guys, like, I was told now, I was hoping I was Greek, like, or something, something, like, more, um, I don't know, exciting, so we'll figure it out, it'll be alright, you always want to be from where you're not, right, so, uh, I'll have to get, get with Garrett because I'm pretty sure because we went to Herman, Missouri for our honeymoon last year and it's like this very cute German town they have like wine and oh it's so much fun um but I was like dang like you're kidding me I was really holding out to be something cool but I knew I wasn't cool like <laughs> I knew it like whatever so um but it was really really fun to just like chat on the ride there and um talk right and I feel like because I'm married, I don't spend an, as much time with my parents one-on-one. -on -one. Um, my mom and stepdad, they obviously live in Iowa. That's a bit like separated from me. And I like don't see them as often. Even my dad who lives down the road from me, like I don't see him as often as like when you were as a child, right? You see him night and day or night, yeah, night and day. Um, and so it was kind of fun just to hang out with her and, and to talk and, and hang out. But I, I was like, oh my gosh, like the family stories are, are really, really important, especially because like your family might not, they're not going to be around for your entire life, right? Like that, that's just, that's, that's what it is, right? We have generations for a reason. And so many stories will be lost if we never take the time to like talk to our parents or talk to our grandparents or, and write these down. Like I have a notes app of like sayings that my dad says. And, um, I now know how my grandparents on my mom's side met. Like I just found out how my grandparents on my dad's side met at, um, I'm trying to think on, oh, it was a funeral actually for my Aunt Joyce. We had gone to, um, and my grandma was talking about how, um, it was like this nice story about Joyce and everything and how her and, um, my grandpa met and it was just like very, very sweet. And I was like, oh my gosh, like sometimes we can become so close minded about ourselves and not like what came before us, um, and what's going to come future, like in the future. I don't know. It was just, it's been a very overwhelming, perfect, awesome summer so far. And summer hasn't even officially started. I, I know that I need to like plan some pockets of time that I take it slow and that I don't like freak out about other things. Like I'm just like, 
it's chill hopefully um we should have a little bit of a break between these weddings um i think we have one in july um and then one i have a trip in august that i'm going to and then we have september so we're, we're rounding out the summer hopefully i'll have more pockets of time to just like hang out and be present and it, it this last weekend was father's day weekend um and i got back on sunday it's sunday right now as i'm recording this but um i got back around like three o'clock and since it was father's day i like called my dad earlier that morning um and i was like hey like i'll be home around like three o'clock um you can we'll like cook something at the house like i'll have garrett pick up steaks we can do like potatoes um and then like my brother had called garrett because we drove separate and convinced Garrett that we should go to the lake for Father's Day. So we went to the lake and my entire afternoon, like we were on, um, we have some jet skis and so we were like, the lake is only an hour away, but this is the first time we've been all year <laughs> because we've been so busy. Um, and so we went to the lake and we were on the jet skis and we had so much fun. Um, and Brody and I decided we wanted to go to like the little beach area and i was just trying to be so calm i was trying to just like soak it in i was floating in the water my feet kill okay my entire body hurts so bad from dancing all night long i did not go to bed until 2 30 that's how i know that it took two hours and 30 minutes for my eyelashes to come off because i had gotten like the dance floor closed at 12. I was in my room by like 12.03 and I like started taking off my eyelashes. So I knew that took that long, but like my entire body was like so tired. I knew that the water would be healing, you know, um, the buoyancy that I could like float around. I wasn't going to do anything too crazy. I wasn't going to get on the tube. Um, but just like floating in the water, um, it was very, very relaxing. But Brody was like building the sand castle and I was like in a very, very shallow part. I was like barely floating my, where I was floating, but it wasn't like deep, like my hands could touch the bottom. Um, and I was like picking up the grains of sand and the gravel and I just like kept picking it up and letting it fall off my hands. I seriously, it was like a form of meditation because I was not thinking of anything. I was not, I did not have my phone. I did not have any distractions. Like it was just very, very slow. I was letting the little like grains of sand fall off my hands and it was very peaceful. And I was thinking to myself, you know what? Like it, like the afternoon was spent with my dad and my brother and my husband and I like could be stressing out right now because I I barely got home I got home from Des Moines and I packed a swimsuit got in the truck and we went to the lake so it like the turnaround was un unreal and I didn't I don't have anything settled I could be stressing out about that or I could be enjoying this moment I could be enjoying where I'm at where my feet are right now um and it was like very just meditative and I felt so good I also thought oh my gosh like what if this is the first time this piece of sand has been looked at isn't that a weird concept as well? So I was just trying to be as peaceful as possible and I do think that helped my overall mood. Um, so I was just like chilling, chilling on the water. I felt like a kid again. Also, Brody was like building a sandcastle and I was looking at Brody and I was like, oh my gosh, like next summer will he want to build a sandcastle? Because he's in middle school, right? Like and next year um, he'll be in ninth grade. So I'm just like, oh, like this is, life is going and you have to stop and look at the little sand. All right. The sand had like some gravel in it, like not gravel, but like rocks. Like it had some river rock in it or something, some lake, lake rock, if you will. But, um, I was like, oh my gosh, like you have to enjoy all the major moments. Um, but you can also enjoy the little moments and you can take some time for yourself and you can practice that self care, especially when you need some time alone. I felt like I've just been over socialized for sure. Like making sure everyone has been taken care of and talking to grandparents that, 
you know, our Andrews or Rachel's or mine or being with my parents or being with everyone, like I need a chill pill. And next weekend is our family float trip. So I definitely, I need a fat chill pill if I'm going to be ready for that. Um, it's going to be a blast. I know it is. Um, but it's, whew, it's a day. I'm super, super tired. So <laughs> this is, this is all you're getting. Be sure to, um, uh, you know, be sure to give a five star review, nothing but five stars, um, and share with a friend who might need it, who might have some crazy in-laws or something that have been asking them crazy, crazy questions. Know that I am so appreciative of you and thank you so much for listening. I will see you in the next one. Bye.